Democracy has been defined in many ways. We would all agree that democracy includes government. Let's see if we can, each one of us, sharpens of democracy. We know that democratic words and forms have been written into laws. But it is the way people practice democracy that really counts. Let's ask this man about defining democracy. He studies communities and the way people live in them. He goes about his job scientifically, observing, recording, analyzing, and reporting. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Students of society have been reporting their observations and analyses for a good many centuries. And as yet, there is not one single definition of democracy that they would all accept. There is one point, however, they would all agree on. And this is it. In thinking seriously of democracy, one must define his words carefully and use them consistently. When you have your own definitions clear, you know exactly what to look for in a community. Many students agree that two important signs of democracy are shared respect and a shared power. Let's take shared respect first. Sharing respect means that each shares the respect of all. Not because of his wealth, or his religion, or his color. But because each is a human being and makes his own contribution to the community. From healing its sick, to collecting its garbage. From managing its railroads, to running its trains. One sign of shared respect in a community is that everybody is given a fair chance to develop useful skills and the chance to put these skills to effective use. And there is shared respect if various groups in the community recognize each other's right to hold different faiths and opinions. And now let's see how we spot the second of the two signs of democracy, shared power. Most observers agree that there is true democracy in a community only if there is shared power. That is to say, only if many people have a share in making decisions that the community will support with force if necessary. More specifically, you can say that power is shared wherever regular popular elections are authorized and are actually held. There is shared power wherever people actually get out voluntarily and vote. And if they can vote without interference or pressure from anybody. There is shared power if office holders are drawn from representative groups in society if they include men from the farms, men from the law courts, men from the stores, men from the factories, office holders who are drawn from representative groups of the community. In a democratic legislature, shared power shows itself in a strong opposition. Listen. And that is why I'm confident the governor will have the support of the House on this bill. Mr. Speaker, as usual, the honorable gentleman is quite wrong. He and the governor he serves so dutifully can expect no support for their policy from this House. A strong opposition is made possible by an effective political party system. The two most important signs of democracy, then, are shared respect and shared power. 
They, in turn, depend on many conditions. Let's consider two of these conditions, economic balance and enlightenment. Economic balance means that the community contains a large middle income group. A relationship between economic balance and democracy has been noted and reported for centuries by students of society. Aristotle said that a government made up of middle income people has the best chance to be democratic. That was 2,000 years ago in Greece. And well over a century ago in America, James Madison warned that extremes of riches and poverty set group against group. In past centuries, economic balance was improved when large feudal estates were gradually reorganized into independent farms as one part of the development of democracy. This creation of better economic balance aided the further growth of democracy. The social observers of our time have also noted that the development of democracy usually goes hand in hand with the growth of large middle income groups. In today's world of giant technology, one of democracy's serious problems is how to maintain flourishing middle income groups. Another important condition for democracy is enlightenment. Making information available to citizens and giving them the skill with which to judge it. As public education increases, democracy grows. In checking a community for democracy, we must find out whether it provides schools adjusted to the needs of its young people. Just being able to get books and newspapers is no guarantee of democracy. The newspapers of a real democracy meet these tests. Balanced presentation of news. Disclosure of source. Competence of the staff. In applying these tests to newspapers, we find out, first of all, if they report both. See if the news pages contain news only and if opinion is kept for the editorial page. Next, we see if the paper says plainly who publishes and edits it. We know which side they're on. Newspapers in a real democracy meet a third test, competence of staff. This test requires newspaper men to value accuracy and impartiality and to interpret the news skillfully for the public. The competence test also requires newspaper men to use the services of experts. I want 500 words on the freedom of the press for our anniversary edition. How about it? But Professor, you know more about the history of freedom of the press than probably any other man in the country. Yes, that's right. I mean the responsibility of a free press and other forms of communication like the radio and the movies to enlighten the people in a democracy. When we examine any democratic community, large or small or just average, we find that we can separate out two distinct signs of democracy, shared respect and shared power. They, in turn, depend on at least two conditions in the community, economic balance and enlightenment. There is no standing still. The more economic balance and enlightenment, the more shared respect and shared power. Democracy is something that's never finished. It wanes with neglect and it grows with care. If a community works to balance its economy, and if it works to enlighten its citizens, such a community can achieve shared respect. And it can achieve shared power. 
By working hard at it, the citizens of any community can achieve democracy.